The top stories tonight in Y News. Typhoon Odette barreled through several provinces in Visayas and Mindanao and left at least eight people dead and scores displaced from their homes. The government has so far administered more than 1.79 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines for the second round of the national vaccination drive. And data from the Philippine Statistics Authority showed that more Filipinos were pushed into poverty in the first six months of 2021 versus the same period of 2018. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, December 17, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Teo. Typhoon Odette has slightly weakened as it made its ninth landfall over Rojas, Palawan this afternoon. In its 5 p.m. bulletin, State Weather Bureau Pagasa said the center of Odette was located over the coastal waters of San Vicente, Palawan as of 4 p.m. It has maximum sustained winds of 150 kilometers per hour near the center and gusting as of up to 205 kilometers per hour while moving westward at 25 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone wind signal number three is braced over the northern portion of Palawan, while signal number two is placed over the central portion of Palawan, including Kalayaan, Kalamian, Cuyo, and Cagayan Silio Islands, while signal number one is placed over Oriental Mindoro, Occidental Mindoro, the western portion of Romblon, the rest of Palawan, Aklan, Capiz, Iloilo, Antique, western portion of Negros Occidental, and Guimaras. Heavy to torrential rains are expected over Palawan. Bicol Region, Quezon, and the rest of Vimaropa may also experience moderate to heavy with at times intense rains, while light to moderate with at times heavy rains may prevail over Cagayan Valley, Cordillera Administrative Region, Aurora, Zamboanga Peninsula, Misamis Occidental, Lanao del Norte, and the rest of Calabarzon. Odette will emerge over the West Philippine Sea tonight and will pass, pass Kalayaan Islands tomorrow. While well, over the West Philippine Sea, the typhoon is forecast to move west-northwestward and may exit the Philippine area of responsibility tomorrow morning or early afternoon, where continuous weakening is expected. Typhoon Odette continues to slam several regions in the country, leaving devastating damage to Palawan and other neighboring areas. Eight were reported dead in Western Visayas, while over 44,000 have been evacuated in four regions. The Philippine Coast Guard logged more than 4,000 passengers stranded as Typhoon Odette continues westward. Eileen Cerudo reports. Eight individuals were reported dead while one is injured in western Visayas due to the onslaught of Typhoon Odette. Among the casualties are 77-year-old Rodolfo Castro and 72-year-old Virginia Palencia in Cebu, Guimaras. A tree was uprooted by the strong wind brought by Odette, falling on top of the home of the two elderly. The local government said they called for a preemptive evacuation, but the two individuals refused to evacuate. Kailan ito yung dalawang matanda ayaw, mm. so light material yung bahay. Uh, yung mga anak, pina transfer sila sa kubo habang ginagawa yung... Negros Occidental Governor Eugenio Laxon has confirmed four casualties reported in the province. Videos of Odette's onslaught circulate in social media showing damaged structures, uprooted trees, flooding, and fallen power lines. In Palawan, several homes were damaged due to strong winds and the main roads in the province are impassable due to torn down trees. Affected residents in Nara, Cuyo, and Agotaya also experienced power outage. 
Palawan Provincial Administrator Attorney Jay Bolusa reports 2,720 families or over 10,000 individuals are currently in evacuation centers. The agency also mulls starting a vaccination drive for unvaccinated residents. Nagbigyan ako ng order kanina sa PHO na ensure yung medical health ng mga nasa evacuate at uh, kung pwede ay uh, hindi na kailangan mag-gather ng tao, uh, maturukan na sila kagad ng uh, bakuna yung mga wala pa na, ano, na babakunahan. He also assures health and safety protocols are observed to make sure residents are not only safe from the typhoon but also from COVID-19. Meanwhile, aerial footage of the communities in Siargao Island remains submerged in water as Philippine Coast Guard conducts an aerial survey to further assess the effect of Typhoon Odette. Based on the latest data of the Department of Social Welfare and Development, a total of 121,545 individuals or 32,690 families have been evacuated in regions hit by Typhoon Odette. Affected regions include southeastern Luzon, eastern Visayas, northern Mindanao, Davao, and Caraga region. Rescue operations in affected areas continue while the country braces for more devastation due to Typhoon Odette. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, several presidential aspirants in the 2022 elections declared a political ceasefire in an effort to help the victims of Typhoon Odette. Nel Maribohok reports. Presidential aspirants Vice President Lenny Robredo and Senator Manny Pacquiao banded together to pool their resources and help the families affected by Typhoon Odette. Earlier, Pacquiao made an appeal for his fellow aspirants to come together and set aside politics to help people in the path of the typhoon. Robredo has responded to Pacquiao's appeal for unity, saying on Twitter that she joins his call. Pacquiao thanked Robredo for heeding the call and asked her to coordinate their efforts. Also, VP Robredo personally oversee the relief hub in Quezon City. Para mas mapabilis ang pagkilos natin, nandito po ako ngayon sa ating Campaign Volunteer Center uh, sa Katipunan Avenue, Quezon City, which we will be converting into a relief hub. We also convened our operation center dito. Starting today, pwede na pong mag-drop off ng mga in-kind donations dito. Leo Didi Guzman said Pacquiao's call is timely, adding his team is ready to assist the distribution of assistance and urge those with money to donate financially to the efforts. At ngayon, tingin ko, uh, napapanahon yung ganyang panawagan, uh, yung mga maraming pera, yung may mga billion-billion, may 3 to 5 billion na hubusin uh, sa eleksyon, ay eh, mga mm-hmm. maganda, kalahati niyan, ibigay na muna doon sa mga taga-Mindanao dahil na nangangailangan sila doon. At sa mga katulad ko, katulad ni RJ, nakahanda yung aming organisasyon para maging makinarya sa distribusyon ng kailang mga ipamimigay. Meanwhile, Senator Panfilo Lacson said he would offer his help had Pacquiao approach him privately and offered whatever resources can share. He said since it was done through media, it goes against his principle that calamity politics is the lowest form of campaigning and he consider it as abominable. Nevertheless, Lakson said his office, like in the past calamities, would extend its help to the victims without fanfare and media coverage. Meanwhile, the Manila City Council has approved Mayor Isko Moreno's request to allot funding for relief operations in the Visayas and Mindanao. 2.5 million pesos is the total approved budget assistance. Also on his FB page, Moreno announced that his volunteer group organized a donation drive to those who wants to give aid for families affected by typhoon. Meanwhile, the tandem of Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte topped their network of volunteers to distribute relief goods. The BBM Sara Unit Team volunteers have prepared relief packs containing 5 kilograms of rice, canned goods, milk, and instant coffee. Marcos on his FB page thanked those who have donated relief goods to their office for the typhoon victims. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. President Rodrigo Duterte will visit the provinces severely affected by Typhoon Odette tomorrow. 
President Duterte made the announcement during a virtual briefing on the typhoon in Malacanang with his disaster mitigation officials. The chief executive assures that the government is trying its best to raise money to help the residents in typhoon-hit areas. I'm flying to, tomorrow to the area. Also, I would hit uh, maybe late uh, Surigao and uh, if uh, there is enough time, Bohol. Then day after, I would uh, try to visit uh, Cebu, then it was uh, western, eastern, eastern side of the islands, uh, Bacolod, Iloilo. Several typhoon hit residents likened the impact of Typhoon Odette to Super Typhoon Yolanda in 2013 as it continues to batter areas in Visayas and Mindanao. However, initial analysis from the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council shows Yolanda remains as the strongest typhoon to land in the Philippines. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council is still assessing the damage brought by Typhoon Odette in several areas in Visayas and Mindanao. An initial analysis report by the NDRRMC shows that Typhoon Odette had similar characteristics with Super Typhoon Yolanda in 2013 and Typhoon Sendong in 2011. In terms of power, Typhoon Odette was packing a maximum sustained winds of 155 km per hour and gustiness of about 235 km per hour as of Friday noon. Odette was nearly as strong as Yolanda with maximum winds of 255 km per hour and gustiness of 260 km per hour while Sandong's record was 75 km per hour and 90 km per hour respectively. NDRRMC Operations Center Chief Jomar Perez said, Both Yolanda and Odette reached the highest wind signal number 4 while Sandong reached the wind signal number 3. Odette has affected at least 10 regions, which is similar with Yolanda's record, while Sandong was felt in 9 regions. As to the extent of damages, NDRRMC spokesperson Mark Timbal said they are still assessing it as of the moment. It's still too early to, to actually determine whether this uh, damages had uh, the extent of damages. Kaya po, we are um, reserving ito pong ating uh, reports up until such time that the damage assessment had been completed by our counterparts to the ground. But NDRRMC Deputy Admin for Operations Assistant Secretary Cassiano Monilia says the damages brought by Typhoon Odette are not as worst as Typhoon Yolanda. As to the damages naman uh, unofficially, ang, ang report naman sa region is uh, hindi siya ganun ka massive, no? Even casualties, sabi ko nga, uh, wala kaming nare-receive na uh, unofficially na maraming casualties uh, for this uh, typhoon death. Yolanda killed 6,300 persons, injured 28,689, and left 1,061 missing, while for Sandong, there were 1,268 fatalities, 4,102 injured, and 241 missings. So far, eight fatalities were recorded due to Odette. Asek Munili adds, the cooperation of the residents is a big factor in avoiding large casualties. Assessment-wise, hindi siya ganun kalaki ang, uh, ano to, ang damages niya as compared to uh, typhoons of the same uh, strength previously. Kaya nabanggit ko nga, medyo nag-improve na yung cooperation ng uh, mga tao and uh, pati yung response uh, effort natin no, sa gobyerno. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. More Filipinos were driven into poverty in the first half of the year 2021, according to the Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA. Rosalie Cos reports why. 
3.9 million Filipinos became poor in the first six months of 2021 due to pandemic restrictions, the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA reported. A survey of 174,007 families nationwide showed the poverty incidence among Filipinos was estimated at 23.7 percent. This is higher from the 21.1 percent recorded in the same period in 2018. Doon sa datos mula 2012 na data, ito yung uh, uh, unang uh, pagkakataon na tumaas ang ating poverty incidence among population in terms of percentage. Poverty incidence among population refers to the proportion of poor Filipinos whose per capita income is not sufficient to meet their basic food and non-food needs. This is estimated at 12,082 pesos on the average for a family of five per month. The COVID-19 pandemic temporarily halted our progress. In 2020, people's incomes and jobs were significantly affected by stringent quarantines. Meanwhile, the subsistence incidence among Filipinos is 9.9% or 10.94 million Filipinos. Subsistence incidence is the proportion of those whose income is not enough to meet even the basic food needs. However, Socio-Economic Planning Secretary Chua is optimistic that with stronger growth in the second half of 2021, further relaxed restrictions and higher vaccination rate, the poverty incidence is expected to decrease. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Partial report from the second day of National Vaccination Day showed more than 1.7 million doses administered. With that number, the country also reached more than 100 million vaccine doses administered. JP Dunez reports. Accumulated report of National Vaccination Operation Center for the second day of National Vaccination Days reaches around 1.7 million total vaccine administered. This constitutes more than 1 million from the first day and around 700,000 doses administered on the second day. NVOC also reported that the country already reached more than 100 million total vaccine administered since the COVID-19 vaccination rollout began on March 1 this year. Of the said figure, more than 43 million are fully vaccinated, while 55 million partially received the primary series of vaccine. At least 54 million Filipinos to be fully vaccinated is the target of the administration before the end of the year. Meanwhile, NVOC is monitoring areas affected by Typhoon Odette as vaccine supplies may get spoilage if cold storage facilities lost their power supply. Habang nag-monitor uh, sila, eh, minomonitor din natin yung kalagayan ng ating mga uh, vaccines. Although last Friday, uh, because we are already anticipating uh, this uh, typhoon, dapat nakasecure na kung saan man nila ilalagay. Meron na tayong mga generator set. Meron na tayong contingency plan but uh, iba din pag actual na tumama na sa kanilang uh, bagyo kaya we will continue to monitor the whole day today. The administration still encourage senior citizens and immunocompromised to get booster dose as soon as they become eligible. Several individuals took the opportunity of the National Vaccination Days to immediately get COVID-19 booster dose as they seek additional layer of protection against Omicron and other variants. Kasi lagi ako sa labas eh. Kaya dapat talaga ma ma-vaccine. Saka na-operaan ako sa puso kaya lang. Nagdi-deliver ako minsan, no? minsan, basta para lagi ako sa labas, lagi ako nautusan sa labas. Nag-decide talaga agad ako. Dahil may mga anak ako, may mga maliit, mali, medyo may maliit pa akong isa, kaya mahirap baka mahawa o makahawa ako. Sa amin po mahalaga kasi syempre, uh, since frontliner po kami, lagi kami nakaharap sa tao, so lagi kami nakaharap sa pasyente, kailangan namin talaga ng added protection, especially itong booster. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. As the pilot implementation ends, the Department of Education is now looking into recommending to President Duterte the expansion of the conduct of limited face-to-face -face classes. Arlene Delgado will tell us why. 
The Department of Education, or DEPED, is now consolidating the reports from all schools that participated in the pilot implementation of the limited physical classes in the country amid the pandemic. DEPED Assistant Secretary Malcolm Garma says the assessment from the four-week test run will be the basis for the recommendation to President Duterte to expand the limited face-to-face -face classes. The Education Department is looking into adding more participating schools and opening up more grade levels, including grades 4 to 6 to junior high school. The agency will finalize the report and make the recommendation before the year ends. Should the president allow the expansion, the DEPED says it will begin in January 2022 until the end of the current school year, while the transitioning to new normal will begin in the next school year. While we are looking at uh, all schools doing the limited face-to-face, -face, but probably uh, it's not 100% of students enrolled in that school, will be going back and then and, and be participating in the limited face-to-face -face classes. And that's very important asset that walang pilitan, no? wala tayong pinipilit, meaning uh, it will still depend on the parents to allow or to give their consent uh, to their children to go face-to-face. In the agency's presentation before the Senate Committee on Basic Education, the assessment showed that the average attendance rate of learners is at 82 percent. Meanwhile, no COVID-19 case was reported among learners. However, more than 300 learners have experienced flu-like symptoms, while the top reason for absence is being sick, like having fever, cough or cold. Deped clarifies these learners were assessed by medical units. Ito mga batang ito that uh, manifested the symptom ay hindi na ho pumasok sa school. Dati po sabihin nito, sa bahay pa lang po na yung mga magulang ay nagdi-decide na na huwag papasukin yung kanilang anak. Uh, part of the process is really for the parents to report to school, to report to the school personnel or school official kung bakit hindi nakapasok yung kanilang anak at uh, immediately uh, these children or these learners manifesting these flu-like symptoms are immediately referred to concern the medical units. The DEPET also took note of the challenges encountered by learners and teachers, including limited time, the unreadiness of learners in the physical setup after almost two years of distance learning, and the difficulties brought about by physical distancing and wearing of face masks and face shields. The Education Department also reiterates that the installation of plastic barriers and the wearing of face shields are not required. The DEPED adds if the President allows the expansion of limited face-to-face -face classes, it will also depend on the readiness level of each school and the alert system in the country. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Philippines confirmed 582 new cases of COVID-19 today. The new infections brought the country's cumulative tally of cases to 2,837,464. Of the total figure, 10,167 are still active cases. The DOH said that 4,015 of the active cases are experiencing mild symptoms, 3,415 are in moderate condition, 1,815 are severe, 539 are asymptomatic, and 383 are in critical condition. There were also 494 new recoveries, pushing the total number of people who have already recovered from the illness to 2,776,727. Also, 74 new deaths were logged, bringing the country's COVID-19 death toll to 50,570. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has topped 272.9 million, while the deaths have surged to more than 5.3 million, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The United States is the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 50 million five hundred and thirteen thousand four hundred thirty seven and eight hundred and three thousand six hundred fifty two respectively according to the cse followed by india and brazil for the news abroad united kingdom prime minister boris johnson appeals to the residents to get their booster shots against covid 19 amid the dramatic surge of infections in the country annie mancilia details why live Good evening, Annie. Good evening, Kath. United Kingdom hit a new record of 88,376 daily COVID cases on Thursday amidst the booster drive being implemented. 
Prime Minister Boris Johnson urged the people to get boosted as this is a vital approach against Omicron. The booster does uh, provide, all the evidence seems to be, the booster does provide uh, a, a, an excellent level of uh, protection. And uh, we think that given the, the balance of risks and the balance of continuing um, uncertainties about Omicron, this is the right approach to take, the right mixture uh, to, to, of approaches that, to do these two things at once. And uh, the progress that we're making with the booster is absolutely vital. England's chief medical officer Chris Whitty also urges people to use caution in interacting with others and to get the booster shots. Currently, over 25 million or 44.3% of the population has received a third or booster dose. According to Professor Witte, it helps uh, subside the peak of Omicron cases. Moreover, as a precaution due to the Omicron vi variant surge, the Queen has cancelled her traditional pre-Christmas launch. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Johnson asserted that England is not being put into lockdown. Kath? Thank you, Annie Mantilia, reporting live from Singapore. South Korea's relaxed social distancing will end beginning this Saturday. The government will replace it by its toughest nationwide COVID restrictions yet. Jane Robles reports why, live. Jane? Gas? Hospitals in South Korea are experiencing its deadliest month due to a surge of serious cases among people in their 60s and older. Officials say more than 86% of intensive care units designated for COVID patients are already occupied amid a spike in hospitalization and deaths. The maximum level the hospital system could manage is 3,600, but the country is seeing an average of 4,700 new cases in the Seoul metropolitan area. This led to Prime Minister Kim Bu-kyum's plan on, of rolling back to tougher COVID restrictions, banning five or more people nationwide. However, the four-person limit will only be applied to fully vaccinated adults. Unvaccinated individuals will be required to eat alone at restaurants. Restaurants, gyms, and karaoke venues are required to close at 9 p.m. and schools will return to remote learning. The new measures will run for 16 days in the hope of slowing down transmission in the capital region. More than 890 COVID patients died this month, bringing the country's death toll to 4,518. Kath? Thank you, Jane Robles, for that live report. An advisory committee for the U.S. Centers of Disease Control unanimously voted for the new COVID-19 vaccine recommendations, preferring Moderna and Pfizer over Johnson & Johnson's. Nerissa Dando will tell us the details live. Yes, Nerissa? Good evening, Kath. After revealing new data surrounding the blood clotting syndromes, which were seen as a rare side effect of the Johnson & Johnson or J&J's vaccine, the U.S. CDC's vaccine advisors now recommend mRNA vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, for those 18 years old and older. Vaccine advisors made a change with votes of 15-0 on Thursday, as it had become apparent that the blood, is, blood clotting syndrome has now become more common, whereas over 54 cases in the U.S. were recorded of having thrombosis with thrombocytopenia syndrome or TTS. Of those cases, nine have died. On an average now, there are 3.8 cases of TTS per million vaccination doses, and furthermore, the vaccine effectiveness have been reported lower than the mRNA vaccines, notably higher for women, where there are 10 cases per million in those 30 to 39 years, and 9 cases per million for those of 40 and 40 to 49. Dr. Isaac C. of the U.S. CDC also informed that the symptoms of its of TTS commonly begins after two weeks of getting the vaccine on an average nine days, addressing the serious deterioration of, of patients' health. Meanwhile, compared to J&J's, the mRNA vaccines have a lower risk of myocarditis, which is a heart inflammatory condition, compared to the risk of blood clotting from J&J's. With this, J&J's still 
being kept as an option to provide an option for those at risk of myocarditis. Beth? Thank you, Nerisa Dando, for that report live from Japan. Meta Platforms Incorporated, owner of Facebook, Instagram, Facebook Messenger, and WhatsApp, identified seven surveillance for hire groups for hacking and collecting information of about 50,000 people across its platforms. These cyber mercenaries claim that the information they collect online only target criminals and terrorists. However, based on a report posted by Meta after months-long investigation, these entities targeted people across the internet in over 100 countries, including journalists, dissidents, critics of authoritarian regimes, families of opposition members, and human rights activists. The report also stated that Meta has alerted those people who it believes were targeted by these companies. Since 2019, Meta has been in a legal battle against Israel's NSO group for allegedly accessing its WhatsApp servers to install a malware on victims' mobile devices. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I'm Kat Tumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening. The Philippines is one of the three participating countries in the World Health Organization Solidarity Trial Vaccines. Colombia and Mali are other participating countries. Experts explain the importance of Solidarity Trial Vaccines. Aiko Miguel reports. The World Health Organization Solidarity Trial Vaccines is currently being rolled out in eight study sites in Metro Manila. Sites include the Philippine General Hospital, Lung Center of the Philippines, and Makati Medical Center. The Department of Science and Technology said it started in the Philippines last September 30. There are more than 5,000 Filipino participants but they need a target number of 15,000 to 20,000. DOST Philippine Council for Health Research and Development Executive Director Dr. Jaime Montoya said that with the Solidarity Trial, they will have more information on COVID-19 vaccines' efficacy among Filipinos. Considering the current limitations of our country in terms of vaccine development, participation in clinical trials of the most advanced candidates developed by international partners will be the best short-term strategy for us. By pursuing collaborations and by participating in clinical trials, we are hoping to provide efficacy and safety data for a vaccine that is directly attributed to the Filipino population. DOSC Secretary Fortunato de la Peña also said it will be easier for COVID-19 vaccines to be registered in the country because of the trials. And such data can be beneficial for eventual application for product registration with the Philippine uh, Food and Drug Administration and ramp up distribution of the vaccines to a larger population. WHO country representative Dr. Rabindre Abeya Singha also said that conducting the solidarity trial data will help in shedding more light on how vaccines work against COVID-19 variants. As we uh, are now faced with an even more transmissible variant, Micron variant, we are increasingly looking at the efficacy of the currently available vaccines, uh, not only in preventing severe disease and death, but as we look towards moving forward and living with COVID-19 or endemic COVID-19, we need to also look at vaccines that are more effective in preventing infection. Two candidate vaccines are now included in the Solidarity Trial vaccines. These are protein subunit vaccine from Medigen and DNA vaccine encoding the spike protein from Inovio. Dr. Marisa Alejandria, one of the local lead investigators in the country, said they will also test four vaccine types. They will study subunit vaccines like Novovax, DNA, intranasal, and mRNA COVID-19 vaccines like Pfizer and Moderna. Healthy individuals 16 years old and above are eligible to join the trial. Dr. Alejandria said they will be recruiting and enrolling participants outside NCR. This clinical trial is a complement no, to the existing vaccine rollout program. In the sense that uh, we know that it's still not really, we're not 100% in our vaccination coverage and uh, we realize when we do our community engagement, uh, 
when we go to the sites, there are still pockets no, of communities that are not yet vaccinated. So these are the ones that uh, we uh, engage, recruit no, into our clinical trial. We're moving towards Southern Luzon, Northern Luzon, Central Luzon. Those who are interested to join the Solidarity Trial Vaccines may contact DOST PCHRD. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Provinces in Visayas and Mindanao experience power outage due to Typhoon Oded. The Department of Energy, on their part, focuses on affected areas with COVID-19 vaccine facilities. Asher Kadapan Jr. gives us the details live. Uh, yes, uh, Asher, good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, Will. The Task Force on Energy Resiliency aims to protect COVID-19 vaccines stored in local government units affected by the onslaught of Typhoon Odette. This is while some provinces in Visayas and Mindanao experience power outage due to severe weather. Based on the record of the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, as of 6 p.m. today, partial power availability is experienced in Antique, Iloilo, Negros Oriental, Cebu, Misamis Occidental, Lano del Norte, Agusan del Norte, Agusan del Sur, Surigao del Sur, and Davao Oriental. While power is unavailable in Northern Samar, Samar, Eastern Samar, Biliran, Leyte, Southern Leyte, Bohol and Surigao del Norte. But while power supply is being restored in concerned areas, the Department of Energy provides a remedy for facilities with COVID-19 vaccines. We are now checking through the Power Bureau and our team, the Task Force Energy Resiliency, where these areas are para kahit hindi pa ma-restore yung transmission facilities natin or yung distribution lines, the third redundancy or the, the genset that is required in that facility is available. DOE Undersecretary Felix William Fuentebella further explains that they already have a data of the facilities where COVID-19 vaccines were stored, but the data may have already been updated. The DOE, however, assures the affected consumers that they are doing their best to restore the power in time for the holidays. The Department of Energy, together with the Task Force Energy Resiliency, is on board to make sure that we will uh, do our best no, to provide the uh, services immediately, considering na kahapon nagsimula na yung simbang gabi. So mm -hmm. we are looking at it, and hopefully yung Christmas natin, uh, transmission side and distribution side, and also the power plants are all back on track. Will, the NGCP says they have already mobilized its line crews and is currently conducting ground patrols to inspect and assess the impact of the typhoon to its operations and facilities. Simultaneously, restoration activities are being conducted on the areas already accessible. Will? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Asher Kadapan Jr. for that live report, Kazan City. A Filipino fisherman recounts a tale of survival more than a week after he was rescued by a Vietnamese fisherman. Janice Ingente has this story. 59-year-old Avelino Montibon went missing on October 17 in the vicinity waters of Bajo de Masinlog in the West Philippine Sea. According to Avelino, he was separated from their mother boat while fishing. He tried to find his companions but he failed. Avelino has been floating in the middle of the sea for nine days and was close to losing hope to survive. Okay. 
On the 10th day, a Vietnamese fishing vessel found Abilino and rescued the Filipino fisherman. He stayed in Vietnam for more than a month and was found by his family through Facebook. Mga 40 days siya sa Vietnam eh. Kasi uh, na, na, napadpa siya sa bandang, bandang kay AIG na. So, uh, napunta siya sa isang isla na kontrolado ng border con pat, uh, control ng Vietnam. At ay sa kanyang salaysay, eh, nakasakay pa siya ng dalawang aeroplano bawal, bawal makarating sa mainland Vietnam. So, we have to follow protocol siya, siyempre. At natagpaon siya actually by uh, Facebook message lang eh. Uh, Nag-contact siya sa kamag-anak niya by Facebook message. So, lumapit pa yung kamag-anak nila sa Coast Guard Station sa Bales. The Montebon family is very grateful because their father was lucky to survive with the help of Vietnamese fishermen. They also thank the Philippine Coast Guard for helping them bring back Avelino to the country. Tuwang-tuwa ako nga nakita na ang asawa ko sa laot na sagit siya sa tagad Vietnam. Labis naming tuwa sa aking mga anak kasi akala namin na wala na siya eh. Yun pala, nasagip siya sa taga Vietnam. Maraming salamat sa taga Vietnam kasi sinagip yung asawa ko. Maraming maraming salamat sir sa inyong lahat sa tulong niyo sa akin. Sobrang tuwa ko sa ako kasi nakita ko ang akong anak, asawa, nalipay ko. Pahinga muna. Yung paglipas sa bagong taon, dyan ang lawat naman na ulit. Pero mag-ingat na ako. Hindi na ako mag-hawak ng maliit na bangka. Montibon also received financial assistance from PCG and was personally brought back to their home in Subic, Zambales. Janice Enhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of James, chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Behind the News, December 17, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Angelo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.